Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. Today we are chatting with Polly Carr, Executive Director at the Alaska Center for the Environment and the Executive Director at Alaska Conservation Voters. Polly has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Polly, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So these two organizations are fascinating. They're two sides of, of a single coin. It is about conservation. On the one hand, you have an organization, a C4, that is allowed to engage in certain advocacy activities. That's the Alaska Conservation Voters. And on the other hand, you have an education organization that really focuses on bringing a sensibility in the community surrounding conservation, and that's the Alaska Center for the Environment. Talk about these two organizations and how they advance conservation across the state of Alaska. Sure. Well, I am, as you said, the executive director of, of two organizations, um, but they share um, the similar vision. And so our vision is that we have an Alaska that is sustained by robust fisheries, a healthy climate, and our clean energy sources, and also an Alaska that is shaped by an active and engaged citizenry, which means people have a voice in the decisions impacting their environment and communities and use that voice to hold decision makers accountable. I would say that um, in addition to, you know, of course, working for things and providing an alternative vision for our state, yes, we have to always work on protecting the resources that make those communities sustainable. And so we do work um, to protect salmon and salmon habitat, for example, against extractive short-sighted coal mining. We don't engage in every uh, in extractive industry. We don't believe that as an organization we should spread ourselves across every industry in the state, but we do work to ensure that what we see as the more sustainable industries like our fishing industries and the resources that really support our communities are um, protected and prioritized over what we really see as short-sighted outside driven extractive industries. The collective work of the two organizations can really be boiled down into four areas. We educate. We educate children, we expose young people to the outdoors, um, we cultivate future leaders including high school students who are learning how to be advocates. We advocate, we work with everyday Alaskans around the state to speak up for issues that they care about, and we elect leaders who will champion those issues, and we hold them accountable. You talk about cultivating future leaders. Describe how you go about cultivating these leaders in a way that also connects to your advocacy work. Great. Um, we have a program uh, for high school students called the Alaska Youth for Environmental Action Program. And this is an a program that was founded in 1998. I actually was a part of its founding with the teenagers back then. And um, through this program, we provide leadership training, civic engagement skills, um, and uh, action project planning to um, young people from villages and cities all over the state each year. Uh, and through that training, teens then choose issues that they want to advocate on that are impacting their communities. And they will often choose a, a statewide campaign that they can come together around. Right now it's climate change and trying to get leaders to look at strategies to um, support more renewables and reduce emissions. One other element of that program that's so critical in this day and age is that it also really teaches di diplomacy skills. We have young people from urban and rural communities from really different cultures that come together through that program and they learn to appreciate uh, different perspectives on an issue. Right. They um, go down to the state capitol each year and they meet with their decision makers so they learn how to hold you know, professional meetings and have civil discourse, which is, I think is something that's lacking, um, as we know, across our nation. And so it really is about building these holistic leaders and whether they continue on 
in the conservation movement or whether they go into some other field, they've got that skill set and they're going to be effective advocates into the future. What is the size of the organization? What's your budget? Mm -hmm. What is your headcount? How many people work for you? Great. Um, our budget is roughly, uh, for, the, for the C3, mm -hmm. <laughs> is roughly um, one and a half million. Mm -hmm. And our budget for the C4 um, is roughly uh, a few hundred thousand dollars, which fluctuates uh, annually with um, different election cycles. Um, within that budget, um, a large portion is generated from our uh, revenue through our outdoor education camp, Trailside Discovery Camp. Trailside Discovery Camp, wonderful camp. Um, this is really the one of the foundations of our, of our work. Um, Trailside Discovery Camp educates young people ages four to 18, exposing them to the outdoors and the natural environment, invoking a sense of appreciation and inspiration, um, providing these hands-on experiences where kids are like out mucking up in the streams and you know seeing salmon right in their backyards and developing some leadership and stewardship skills. Um, approximately 5,000 to 9,000 children each year go through those camps. Um, and for many young people um, who might not otherwise have exposure to the outdoors or whose you know, families don't go camping every weekend, this is a first time experience for them. And so it's fairly profound. Who are your partners? So we work with groups like the Renewable Energy Alaska Project. Um, we work uh, we're in communication with um, some of the utilities, um, and you know, mostly we're looking, we're working with um, uh, people and then government leaders who might be interested in pursuing some of these policies. For example, the Anchorage administration. So, if you were to uh, sketch some of the other changes that you'd like to bring to the organization over the next three to five years, what yeah. would those be? Well, um, you know, we we started this conversation talking about the two organizations and. One of the areas that we think that we can grow and really strengthen in Alaska is building up that um, advocacy to get more leaders um, into office that will be able to support these issues. Um, and so we will be looking to grow that presence um, in the state uh, because we believe that there are so many Alaskans out there that you know, care about these issues and want to see their communities sustainable. They want clean water. They want their salmon prioritized over short-sighted development. Right. Um, they want you know, jobs for their children that are in their communities. And so we need more people like that to be speaking up and we need to get more of these leaders in place and to hold more of these leaders accountable. And we're also gonna be looking at um, you know, bringing the work that we do among these two organizations um, closer in alignment in terms of our advocacy and our elections work, um, really kind of bringing that under a, a more unified identity going forward. Well, Polly Carr, thank you so much for describing the work of your two organizations, um, the Alaska Center for the Environment and, the, and Alaska Conservation Voters. Thank you so much for your work on behalf of um, Alaska and, and the Alaskan environment. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.